Welcome, witnesses. Um, Ms. Bodine, uh, are you concerned that the wording of the 2023 rule will create uncertainty for landowners across the West, and particularly in Wyoming? Yes, Senator Lummis, I am very concerned about that. Uh, it has been set up as case-by-case -case jurisdiction, and as what we've seen before, that has led to regulatory expansion and inconsistencies. During your time at the EPA, have you ever seen the administration willfully ignore the court's ruling as they seem to be doing in Sackett? I have not. What, what are they hanging their coat on in terms of departing from what seemed to be uh, clear direction in Sackett to get to where they are today? The, in their uh, September 7th or 8th conforming rule, they, they excise significant nexus out of their regulations. And that is accurate, that, ref, that reflects what the Sackett decision said. But what they left was all of the interpretive language which was, in, which was in guidance in preamble, they didn't put it in regs, and that makes it all case by case, but they left it all uh, intact, and they've said, this is what we're gonna do on a case by case basis to follow it. And if you compare what they say, how they're gonna interpret these terms with the opinion, they don't match. But we may end up having to, people may end up having to litigate that on a permit by permit basis and not by challenging the rule. It, that remains to be seen. What, it, it seems so unique to me that this could be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, especially after um, a decision like Sackett. Um, what makes that possible? The, um, they could have written uh, bright lines in their conforming rule and, and chose not to. Uh, I do think that the agencies are trying to hold on to as much jurisdiction as they, they had, you know, that they wanted. Um, you know, the, there, is, there, there has to be some case by case. I can't, I'm not gonna say that everything is absolutely bright line, uh, but, but what we have here is essentially 100% case by case. Yeah, I'm deeply concerned about that because some of the examples pre sackett uh, of enforcement actions in Wyoming uh, would to the um, just naked eye of people with common sense mm -hmm. seem to be beyond the scope of the federal government. Um, it, it also seems to fail to, to recognize uh, state jurisdiction over water, uh, especially quantity, but also quality. Um, so, what would you advise if you were involved in the decision making at the agency uh, to, as a clarification? So we're not just in this pattern of litigating. Um, it almost seems like an effort is being made to run out the clock um, on uh, people who are regulated and then have to um, access the courts mm -hmm. to um, uh, have a more reasonable interpretation of the law. Yes, I, most people just want to get their project done and so they won't litigate. And that is how you get kind of ever increasing claims of jurisdiction. Um, you talked about some examples that were, you know, old, older examples of, of, of overreach. My concern is that, that the way they've set this this rule up, they've left the door open to, to just to go back to that same overreach uh, because they can, because of the way they're defining their terms. I would recommend um, that the operative terms of how the statute should be implemented should be in rule language and not just left to a guidance document. We're told uh, frequently that guidance is not um, 
necessarily something that has to be um, adhered to uh, it with a bright red line. But then there are examples where it is. Correct. Um, does the Congress need to step in and define guidance in a way that makes it less onerous? If, if the agencies take the position that a guidance is binding, it's a rule, yeah. and, they, and it can be challenged in court. I thank the witness. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.